God sent Jesus then, he didn't send him to start a monument. He sent him to start a movement. Let me say it one more time. When God sent Jesus, he didn't send him to start monuments. What that mean, Pastor? He didn't send him to build big buildings with stained glasses. Come on now, somebody. He sent him, amen, watch this, so that now he does not have to dwell in buildings that were crafted by the hands of man. But now he can be dwelling in buildings that have been crafted by the hands of God himself. God sent his son to start relationship and not a religion. back at RKC. Um, today's message was really inspiring. I should have heard it a few years ago. Could have avoided some mistakes, but moving forward, I would, I know now what to do. I'd first like to thank Relevant Kingdom Center for the awesome experience that I had today. From the time I walked in the door, it was the ambience, the atmosphere of praise began to lift every concern that I came into the ministry with. And as praise and worship went on, I can say that I began to, the Holy Spirit began to work a new thing in me. I am completely revived. I look forward to attending every service if I could. I mentioned to the head pastor that I would relocate a family of seven just to be a part of this ministry. Exuma is blessed to have it and I thank God for it. It used me today in a great way. It used me within myself to bring myself up because of what happened here and I thank God for it. Thank you to the pastors and to my mother Thompson that Thomas that invited me. Welcome to our relevant online experience. We're so excited to have you tuned in with us. We know so many of you are watching from our various platforms, whether that's on Facebook, YouTube, our online campus, wherever you're watching from right now, here's what we want you to do. In the comment section right below this video, I want you to go ahead and type your name and let us know where you're streamed in from. Go ahead and do it right now. As I'm speaking, type your names in the comment and let us know where you're watching from. We want to welcome you. We want to embrace you as a part of our family. You know, last week we had such an incredible time in God's presence and we saw a total of four souls come into the kingdom. That's four persons surrendered their lives to Christ for the very first time. And it's because of each and every single one of you that that's made possible. Each time you invite a friend, each time you share one of our experiences. As a matter of fact, right now, those of you on Facebook, I want you to click the share button. Start a watch party. If you're watching us from our online campus, click the share button. Invite as many of your friends as possible to tune into this experience with you. Because I believe that God has a word today that's going to transform their 
lives. You know, as a church, I am so thankful and grateful that during this difficult time, during this time of crisis, that while we're not able to gather physically, we're still able to stay connected online. This past Wednesday, what we did is we took our WWE Bible studies and we brought it online over the internet. You see the footage going across the screen. We were able to dig into the word of God and study his word online. And so I'm just extremely grateful grateful and thankful for that. For those of you that would like to be a part of our Bible study this coming Wednesday, simply visit our website relevantkingdomcenter.com and you'll see a link there or a tab that says online Bible study. Well, today, like I said, I believe it's going to be an incredible experience. God is going to move in a mighty way. And our lead pastor has a powerful word for you. Um, for now, um, I want to invite each and every single one of you to stand right now, wherever you're at. I want to invite you to stand. And we're going to take you live now to our campus over there in Port Charlotte, Florida, as we begin to worship. Come on, y'all. I just want you to lift your hands right now. How many of you need God's presence more now than ever? We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, we're going to sing. Glory, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Let the praises of the Lord rise. Say, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, come on and let it rise, we sing oh. We want the glory of the Lord to rise. We sing, oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your glory is in this place. Come on, help me sing, RKC. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise come on sing right there behind your computer sing whoa let it rise among us let the glory of the lord let it rise and let the praises of our king let it rise among us let it rise, we sing, oh, 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 let it rise, come on, put those hands together and sing, oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise, let it rise, now how many of you know that your praise is a weapon? We need your praise to fill that place right there where you are. Say, let the songs, let the songs of the Lord, let it rise. Let the songs of the saints, let it rise. Let the joy of the King, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord, let it rise among us. And let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. We sing, oh, 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 let it rise. Let it rise, 
Come on, church, now we're going to put it all together. We're going to sing, let the glory and let the song say, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. And let our worship rise before you, Lord. Let the songs of the Lord let it rise among us, Lord. Rise among us and let the joy of our King let it rise among us. Let it rise. We sing, oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Come on, behind that screen. Put your hands together and say, oh, come on, RKC, we're going to let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise in your community. Let it rise on the job. Let it rise in your home. Father, we need your glory, Lord. Let it rise. Oh, yeah. We need your power, Lord. We need your glory, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. We need your power, Lord. We need your glory, Lord. We need your glory, Lord. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Father, we just thank you, God, for your presence in this place. We're going to lift this place with worship right there behind the screen. I want you just to give God some praise. Just in your own words, just tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you need him. Thank him for who he is. He is a way maker. He is everything that we need. And Father, we acknowledge your presence right now. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Come on, just say, You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker. You're a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, yes I do. You are here. You're healing every heart. And we worship you, Lord. Come on, worship. We worship you. And just tell them you are way maker. You're a miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, Father, you are way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Come on, even when it's dark, he is who he is. He keeps his word. Oh, God, you are, you are here. Mending every heart And I worship you, yes I do We worship you Come on, worship him right there 
You are here. You're turning lives around, and we worship you, oh God. We worship you. Come on, church. Tell them you are way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is you. Oh, everything I need you to be, God, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, just tell them again, you are a way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. You're my God, that is who you are. Come on and just make it personal. You are, you are a way maker. You're a miracle worker, God. No matter what situation I face, my God, you are everything, God. That is who you are. You never leave me, you never forsake me, God. Rainmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. You're my God. That is who you are. Oh, come on, let's lift the worship. You are everything, God. You're everything, God. You're a promise keeper, Lord. And we worship you, Lord. That is who. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're Jehovah Nisi. God, you are. Rainmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, everything we need, Waymaker. Father, you know just what you're doing, Lord. Come on, I dare you to just tell them, My God, I put my trust in you. No matter what it looks like right now, God, I trust you, Jesus. Waymaker. Oh, God, we bless your name. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. You're everything we need, God. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Wow, what an incredible time in worship. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Listen, God is indeed a way maker. I want to remind you today that whatever it is that you're going through, that God is in complete control, that you can place your trust completely in Him. Um, I want to say again a special welcome to all of you that may just be joining us, that may just be tuning into this broadcast. We're so excited to have you a part of our family this morning. You know, we're about to go into the Word today. And, you know, just before we get into the Word, I want to encourage you guys to be engaged, to, to share or to be a part of this experience. As a matter of fact, go ahead and click the share button if you have not done so as yet. Share this experience with as many persons as possible so that they could hear the life-changing word of God today. But again, I want to encourage you to engage um, today with the experience, with the message. How can I engage? You can simply type amen. You can type hallelujah. Um, RKC Bahamas, you guys know how we do it. Preach young man. Go ahead and drop that down in the comment section. Engage with those um, other persons watching with you today. And I believe that this word is going to be absolutely life changing. Well, we're now about to take you um, over to our campus there in Port Charlotte. But before we do that, here's a quick recap of what took place the last three weeks of this series, Gloriology. Whenever anyone comes in contact with the glory of God or whenever anyone, um, whenever God reveals even a portion of himself to anybody, their lives are completely changed. 
says that when Moses came down and Moses and time after time, just to kind of help you guys to understand this, time after time Moses would go, he would go up um, to the mountain and he would speak to, to God and God would, would be um, revealing his word. He would actually be giving him the law, uh, instructing him on what he want the people to do. It says that when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hand, he was not aware that his face was what? Radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. <laughs> know why this is so powerful? I want you to know that when you spend time in God's presence, when you seek his face, when, you, when you're consumed and you take time out of your busy schedule, out of your busy day, out of every single thing that you have to do, when you take time and you spend time in God's presence, he, he transforms you. He completely changes you. He changes your, he changes your face. He changes your, your, your attitudes, your personality. Everything about you changes. That's why some people, when they look at you today and when they look at you um, back then, they'd be like, wow, everything about you changes when you come in contact with the glory of God. The greatest revelation of God's glory now on the earth. Watch this. It's not the heavens and it's not the earth. Is you. Whenever God is getting ready to real, reveal glory in your life, He requires you to go higher. I want that to sink in. Whenever God is getting ready to reveal glory in your life, He requires you to go higher. Most people ask, you see, for what they're, what they're not prepared for. As a matter of fact, I am a firm believer, amen, that you cannot get something and you will not lay hold of something that you cannot handle can you handle what you've been praying for can you handle what you've been asking for we've been singing the songs and praying the prayer i want more of your glory your glory lord is what i need more of you and less of me but the question is are you prepared to handle the glory that god wants to put on your life when it comes are you prepared to handle what god has for your life can you handle it? God's glory deserves a response. And watch this, it's actually a question. What would your response be? I'm gonna say it again. God's glory demands a response. What will your response be? Will you respond in adoration? Will you respond in repentance? Will you respond in total surrender? One day. When the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours, oh, one day, but it really doesn't matter with me when now. the war is won, we will be strong, we will be strong, oh, glory, like anybody I would like to live, glory. a long life, long living has its Relevant Kingdom Center, man, we are so excited because we are in week four. We are putting the icing on the cake of this sermon series, Gloryology. Want to say thanks to Pastor Carson for being the greatest campus pastor there is, man. Thank you so much. Of course, we're here in Port Charlotte, Florida. You guys are there in Exuma, Bahamas. And then for our Relevant Online family, we want to say thank you for joining Relevant Online. Wherever you're streaming from today, you're streaming on our website this morning. You're streaming on our online campus. Man, we want to say thank you. We've got service hosts that are waiting and willing 
to take your prayer requests. Of course, there's a note section and then there's a Bible section that you could utilize while we share the message today. If you're watching us on Facebook, if you're watching us on YouTube, then of course, we encourage you to go over to our live campus, our online campus, where you can have a more interactive experience. But nonetheless, we encourage you, amen, to stay tuned. We also want you to do us a favor. We're the only church that'll break in the middle of a sermon or before a sermon to tell you we want you to share this message. We believe that the good news has to get to the world. There are so many people that are hearing bad news. Let's get them some good news. And so here's what we want you to do. We want you to help us to be digital evangelists today. We want you to push like if you're on Facebook and we want you to push share. Come on, here's the other thing you can do as Pastor Carson stated, you can start watch parties. And so go ahead if you haven't already done so, start a watch party. But welcome to our Sunday experience, our relevant Sunday experience. Welcome to this experience wherever you're watching it, whenever you're watching it, because we believe that God has a word for you. Well, we want you to be very interactive and we want you to be focused. And so just like you would in a normal church building, we're going to ask you right where you are, if you can, stand as we get ready to go into the word of the Lord. And of course, if you don't have your Bibles, the scripture is going to appear on the screen as well. But we're going to go to our text today. And it's coming from the book of Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3. It says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the, laws, the Lord rises up on you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Today, if I could tag a topic to the text, it would be glory carriers. Glory carriers. Can you talk to yourself and say, I am a glory carrier. Come on, I want you to say it with confidence. If you're watching us online, wherever you are, I want you to say this with confidence. I want you to declare it today. Make this your declaration. Say, I am a glory carrier. And if I could have a subtopic, it would be the return of glory. The return of glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated in your living room, in your bed, wherever you are. <laughs> Amen. Watching this, you may be seated, but we're going to be talking about being glory carriers and then our subtopic, the return of glory. This is going to be a very prophetic moment, a very prophetic message. I believe that the Lord's downloaded into our hearts today to share with you. And so right now we know that we are in dark days. We are living in dark moments that have, that have produced depression, confusion, fear, anxiety, and worry. We are in a dark place where there are more questions than there are answers. People are confused. People are worried. People are wondering, where is God in all of this? Because right now, it seems as though these are some of the darkest days that the that we've ever experienced. I've seen on online, there are statements where people are saying, please, let's redo 2020. Uh, this ain't real. Or, you know, 2020, let's have a do-over. Because the truth of the matter is, the year is nothing like what we expected it to be the year is nothing that what we would have hoped for it to be as a matter of fact life days are dark we are living in dark days and dark times but here is the good gospel message from the onset and that is that darkest moments provide God's greatest opportunity for his glory to shine let me say it again the darkest moments provide the greatest opportunity for God's glory to shine here's what I know for a fact and that is God will do his best work against the backdrop of darkness hallelujah you know I, I look at jewelers and whenever jewelers are getting ready to show a piece that they want to entice buyers with they would usually show this jewelry against backdrops that are dark because dark backdrops begin to show the brilliance the magnificence and the beauty of the diamond that they would hope to express or to entice potential buyers to buy and to, to have potential buyers desire it and so they would put these jewelries they, they would put these magnificent pieces up against back dark backdrops 
And here's what I know. No matter how dark it is, God is still able to shine. Come on now, somebody. I want you to type that underneath the, the, the comment section saying no matter how dark it is, God can still shine. If you believe that, come on, only if you believe that, I want you to type that. No matter how dark it is, God is able to shine. I dare somebody to say God's still going to shine. Come on. God's still going to get glory regardless of how dark it is. Because darkness does not stop God from moving. Let me say it again. Darkness does not stop God from moving. He can move in the dark. You see, you and I get fearful in the dark. We get confused in the dark. We get depressed in the dark. Hallelujah. We get worried and we get anxious in the dark. But God is able to do his best work in the darkest places and in the darkest spaces. I wish I had somebody that could type amen in the comment section. If you believe this today, wherever you are, come on. Darkness does not stop God from moving. He can do his best work. Hallelujah. In dark places, God is not anxious. God is not worried. God is not concerned. Hallelujah. But God is able to shark, sh shine in the darkest places and in the darkest spaces. God is able to work. Somebody say work. Yeah, that's what he's getting ready to do. I believe in this moment, God is getting ready to work things out. God is getting ready to show the world that he alone is God. And beside him, there is no other. And here's what Genesis 1 and 2 tells us about the beginning. It says this, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God, watch this, moved. Come on, let me say it again. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God did what? Come on, what did it do? It moved. And here's what I'm trying to tell somebody. That no matter what you're going through, God is still able to move on your behalf. Don't you doubt him. Don't you believe for a day that he has forgotten you. Don't you believe that he is not able to bring to pass everything that he has promised over your life. Because he can still move in your life. As a matter of fact, this is God's greatest opportunity. Hallelujah. God has you right where he needs you to be so that he can show Show up and he could show out so that he could prove that he alone is God in your life and I don't know who you are I don't know where you are I do know this that God can still move in your life regardless of the circumstances around your life come on now somebody because the God above you is still good to you regardless of what happens around you I know we're inside a state of pandemic I know we're in a state of fear I know we're in a state of confusion and worry but can I just tell you, God is getting ready to move. As a matter of fact, I sense God even moving right now. Hallelujah. I sense God moving around the nations. I sense God moving around the earth where men and women, boys and girls, prime ministers and kings and presidents will begin to call on his name and realize that there is no God like our God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the earth was dark and it was without void. It was void. And uh, watch this. The spirit of God moved on the face of the earth. And I'm glad that when he moved, watch this, y'all, it didn't stay dark. Come on now, somebody. The moment he started to move, hallelujah, darkness began to dissipate. And I want you to know the Bible declares that weeping endures but for a night but joy. Come on now, somebody. Watch that conjunction because the conjunction is a function, hallelujah, that I believe that we ought to pay attention to. A conjunction, watch this, it connects what's b b b behind it with what's before it, or a conjunction kicks the butt of what's coming after it. Come on now, somebody, and even though it may be dark, the conjunction says that weeping is for a night, but somebody holler but, but joy comes in the morning. Whenever God moves on the dark, and in dark places, it doesn't stay dark darkness is dissipated in the presence and by the power of almighty god wherever god moves hallelujah watch this light comes about wherever god moves his glory begins to shine and the bible tells us this in the book of genesis amen that the earth was dark and without void but god said let there be light come on now somebody i believe that there is so much power in the word of god that it doesn't matter who else has a 
word. Watch this. As long as God spoke him, as long as God has the word over your life, there is nothing that could negate that word. There's nothing that could stop that word. Come on now, somebody. I believe right now that God has spoken a word over your life and no corona can cancel it. No diabetes can cause it to be deleted. Come on now, somebody. Nothing in this world, hallelujah, can stop God's word from coming to pass over your life. I'm preaching better than y'all commenting this morning. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody just declare, I got a word over my life. Come on, glory carrier. Say, I've got a word over my life. You got a word over your life. And whenever God moves in dark places, watch this darkness dissipates because light begins to shine. Hallelujah. Whenever God begins to move, things don't stay the same. And I'm here to tell you that things aren't going to stay the same. Watch what the Bible tells us that in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God and God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him the word come on somebody holler the word come on comment and shout the word somebody holler the word somebody comment the word the word the word the word gave life and everything that was created and his life watch this brought light to who everyone the light shines where in darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it the darkness can never extinguish it. That means that when God begins to shine, hallelujah, light cannot be overcome by the darkness. His word cannot be canceled out by what's happening in the world right now. Hallelujah. That's why I'm so glad that I have his word in my life. I've got his word over my life. That's why I'm not worried. I'm not fearful because I've got a word. Somebody just holler, I got a word. Come on, type it in the comment section. Say, I've got a word. Hallelujah, I've got a word. Darkness doesn't affect God. He affects it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your circumstances doesn't affect God. He affects it. Come on. Scientists say this about darkness. They say that darkness isn't a thing. It's the absence of a thing. Darkness, then, is, watch this, the absence of light. It's a state, not your fate. Woo. I want to say that again. Darkness is a state, not your fate. I want somebody to know that where you are isn't where you'll always be. You're just passing through this. Come on, yea, though you walk, watch this through the valley of the shadow of that. You fear no evil. Why? Because you know where you are is not where you're always going to be. It's not always going to be dark days, but the light of God is getting ready to shine in your life. Hallelujah. The word of God is going to come to pass over your life and God will fulfill his word in your life. Your dark our place is not a state. It is a fate. Hallelujah. It's not your fate. It's your state. When light shows up, then it shifts darkness. It affects the dark. Darkness, then, watch this, y'all, becomes a platform on which light performs. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. Darkness, then, becomes a platform on which light performs. Your pain, your crisis, your pandemic is only a platform. And God is about to raise the curtains and start to create incredible things from these dark dark places. Come on. God is about to get some glory in your life. God is about to get some glory in our communities. God's about to get some glory in our nation because darkness is a platform on which light simply performs. Come on now. God is going to raise up, I believe, and he is doing it already. He is raising up a remnant that will produce a revolutionary revival that expresses the power, the magnificence, and the glory of who he is. These are the moments, watch this, that glory will arise from the ashes of darkness and watch this, things are going to begin to shift for God's glory. I wonder if there's anybody that's ready for the shift. Come on, because there is a shift taking place. I believe that the world now is getting ready to see the glory of our God. There's a shift. Somebody say there's a shift. Yeah, there's a shift where God is getting ready to raise up some people that will carry this glory. Watch this, not just in a building, but this glory will be carried within the hearts of people that are getting ready to shift atmosphere, that are getting ready to shift nations. 
God is getting ready to take, watch this, y'all, your influence then to another level. God is getting ready to cause people to see his glory on your life and in your life. Because watch this, in the midst of darkness, people will recognize that there's something different about you. In the midst of darkness, people will recognize that there is something different about you. There is a difference in the way you react and the way you respond to pain and adversity. Adversity. You don't let fear control you. Faith does. You don't panic. Watch this. You walk in peace. You're not worried. You're worshiping. In the midst of dark moments, God's light and God's glory will shine. And here's what I know it will do. It will demand the attention of people. It will demand the attention of nations and kings. It will begin to shift atmosphere. People are going to look at your life and they're going to say, why aren't you concerned? It's because you've got Jesus Christ in your life. You've got Christ as your foundation. People are going to wonder, why aren't you panicking? Why aren't you having a cardiac arrest and your cardiac is at rest? It's because what they don't understand is what's outside does not affect what's on the inside. Come on now, somebody. But what's on the inside begins to affect, hallelujah, what's on the outside outside and so here's a statement I want you to write down if you're taking notes glory comes from within and transform things without hallelujah glory comes from within and it transforms things without God's presence then watch this is not contained in buildings that's why I'm not worried about buildings being closed because it's okay for them to shut down church buildings but they didn't shut down the church hallelujah because God does not dwell in buildings that were crafted with hands of men but watch this God dwells in buildings that were crafted by his time now in old testament old testament antiquity we recognize that god once dwelled in buildings that was crafted by the hands of men and his presence was signified and represented by what we call the ark of the covenant but when jesus went on the cross come on now somebody the bible says that the veil in the temple was rent and what it signified was watch this to the holies of holies where only the priests once could have gone it signified not only did we have access into god but now god is having access to us and watch this God now will dwell in the hearts of men and women and this is why things on the outside don't affect what we do on the inside because greater is he that is in where us than he that is in the world I wonder if I got any glory carriers on the stream today I wonder if I got anybody that say I won't allow what's happening on the outside to affect what's happening on the inside but I am a transformer and not a conformer. I shift atmospheres. I shift nations. Why? Because I carry glory with me. And whenever glory hits darkness, darkness begins to dissipate. Darkness begins to dissipate. God is dwelling then on the inside of you and I. Watch this. Here is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. If you're taking notes, watch the text here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1. Paul writes this. He says, therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way. What's the new way? No longer are we required, hallelujah, to be in the presence of God is required to be in a building. But this new way is that he is now living in the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. Now we carry this glory. He says, now since there has been mercy given and uh, for us in this new way, what we do, we never give up. Come on, I believe that there is somebody here that was getting ready to throw in the towel. Hallelujah. I know you're not a superwoman and you're not a superman, but you serve the great I am. You serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, this is why we don't give up. Can I just tell you, sometimes, yes, I get shaken in my faith. Sometimes, yes, amen, it hurts. Sometimes, yes, I get a little confused, but then I remember whose I am. I remember the word that's on my life, and I don't give up. Hallelujah. I press through with tears in my eyes if I have to come on I press through if I got a limp toward what God has called me to why because I never give up I got the greater one on the inside of me watch what it says in verses 5 of 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 he says you see we don't go around preaching about ourselves here's what I do know 
God is now taking the eyes of people off of themselves and off of man and putting it on him. Paul says we don't preach about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said this, watch this, let there be what? Light in darkness has made the light to shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus. Meaning, watch this, God's glory now is on the inside of us. Watch verse 7 then. Verse 7 says this, we now have this light shining where? Where is the light shining? It's in our hearts. But we ourselves are like what? Fragile clay jars containing this, watch this, containing, containing. We've got something on the inside. We contain a great treasure. This makes it clear, watch this, that our great power is from God and not ourselves. I'm here to tell somebody the reason why the enemy won't overcome you, the reason why depression can't win, the reason why worry can't win, the reason why fear has to dissipate in your faith is strong. It's because you've got the greater power of God on the inside of you. It is not by might. It is not by power, but it is by the spirit of the Lord that we will rise up from the ashes of defeat, that we will rise up from the ashes of failure. Come on, is there anybody up in here ready to rise? I dare somebody to say that I am a glory carrier. Come on, comment under those sections and say I'm a glory carrier. Declare it. Amen. In the atmosphere of your room, declare it. In the atmosphere of your home, and say, I am a glory carrier. Watch this, verse 8 to 10. I love this. Hallelujah. So here it is, verse 8 to 10. It says this in 2 Corinthians 4. He says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not what? Crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven in despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Hallelujah. I here to tell somebody, if you get knocked down, if you can look up, baby, you could get up because you've got a greater one on the inside of you. Through suffering, Watch this. Our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Verse 11 to 12. Yes, we live on the constant danger of death because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. I like this verse. He says, but we continue to preach. Come on, relevant. That's why Pastor Carson and I will do everything we can to continue to get this good news to, to, to your hearts and to your homes. Come on now, every person that's watching this, you ought to be sharing this right now because we're continuing to preach. We're continuing to preach. We're continuing to preach. Watch this because we have the same kind of faith of the psalmist had, had he, that, had he, that he had when he said this, I believed in God. So I spoke. Hallelujah. Paul is now referencing Psalms 116. Hallelujah. That is where the psalmist said, watch this, I trusted in God and therefore he has put a song of praise in my mouth. Here's what the psalmist was saying that Paul referenced here. He says, no matter the troubles that I go through, I am not alarmed. Come on, read Psalms 116 on your spare time. He says, no matter what I go through, I am not alarmed because I got God on my side and I know that when I call on him, he will answer me come on somebody say i believe and therefore i spoke yeah i believe what god said not what cnn or fox or zness or our news says. i believe what god says therefore i still got a praise in my mouth hallelujah and watch this he says this all of this is for your benefit and god's grace will reach more and more people Therefore, this will be a great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Here's what I do know, y'all. This pandemic is going to cost God to receive more glory. See, God now has broken, broken free from buildings. He's broken free from the religious rhetoric that we have contained him to. And now he is loose on the earth. Hallelujah. Through the internet. He's loose on the earth. Hallelujah. Through the praises and through the prayers of the saints. Come on now, somebody. And now people will begin to see his glory. Even more people will be reached. Darkness then, and I'm almost done. Darkness then, as we stated, is the absence of light. And God's glory, here's what God's glory represents. If you're a glory carrier, here's what it represents. And here's what you represent. God's glory represents God's light. So when times are dark, it means that the glory of God then is absent. 
Let me say it again. When times are dark in the nation, when times are dark in the world, it could mean and could it be that God's glory is absent? God's glory represents his power, his presence, his voice, and his majesty. When people are no longer hearing the voice of God, when people are no longer encountering the power of God, whenever people do not fear and reverence the majesty of God, it means, what's this, that his glory is absent. Because where the glory of God dwells, there his voice will be. Hallelujah. Where the God, glory of God dwells, there his presence is felt, his power is encountered, and his majesty is seen. And so Agazig and our main text describes a day and time and in history of Israel when the glory of God was not present in Israel. Israel was in a dark place. Israel had more questions than they did answers. And Isaiah, hallelujah, in our main text describes this day. Watch what he says in verse 2 of Isaiah 60 of our main text. He says, the sea darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people. And here is what I do believe. I do believe that we're in a time when God's glory has departed because of the wickedness of a generation and a people. Not just watch this, y'all, because church people like to blame the world. But I believe, hallelujah, God's glory is departed because we have come to the place when those who are not just in the world, World, but those who have claimed God to be their Lord with their lips, yet their hearts, are, their hearts are far from him, has gone away from the things and from the ways and from the heart of God. We claim him with our lips in our building, but our hearts is far from him. Hallelujah. We claim him with our lips and we say that we love God, but yet there are people that are cheating. There are men that are cheating on their wives. We say that we love God, but yet there are women that are not respectful or even yet willing to submit to their husbands we say that we love God but yet there are children that are disobedient hallelujah to their parents we say that we love God but yet we hate our brother we say that we love God hallelujah but yet we have given ourselves over to the perversions of the Lord of the world hallelujah we claim to love him and we shout praises in the building yet we live like pagans in the world hallelujah we have become Sunday Christians but I believe hallelujah God is shifting things in the atmosphere I wonder if there's any Anybody that can sense him shifting it. Hallelujah. I know this is unpopular. I know the stream's going to drop right now because people don't like to hear the truth. But the truth is there are a lot of us that have been worshiping God with our lips. But our heart is far from him. And even us as pastors and leaders have to get to the place where we recognize that God's glory has exited the building. That God's glory is no longer in the place. Why? Because we have become perverted even in the house of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah I tell you this is prophetic don't you change hallelujah this stream don't you come off the stream because God wants to touch your heart come on he's convicting even now hallelujah he's convicting even now and I wonder if there's anybody up in here grateful for mercy that's grateful for grace because though we have been far from him God is extending mercy to us right now God is extending mercy to you right now wherever you may be he is calling on your name and he is saying I've got a plan I've got a purpose for for your life in the book of first samuel chapter 4 we hear of eli and phineas and hophni these were men that were serving in the temple of god eli was a good man but he did not he did not train his sons well he his sons started to be perverted his sons hallelujah begin to profane the house of the lord and the bible says that israel had entered into a dark time in first samuel chapter 4 and the bible says that they went to war and as a result of going to war here's what happened eli's son hophni and Phineas were killed in battle and not only that watch what happened the Bible says that their enemies took the Ark of the Covenant the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of the Lord and in battle watch this the Bible says that Israel lost and Hophni and Phineas Eli's sons those who were in charge of the temple because Eli was a judge over Israel and his sons now were perverted and his sons were doing that which was wicked in the Lord's eyes and the Lord allowed the enemy to come in and and to take their lives. And the Bible says not only did the enemy take their lives. But the enemy also stole the ark of the covenant of God. Bible says this. That when Eli came. And there was a servant that came to Eli. That brought him news and said Eli your sons had died. The Bible says that Eli fell over and died. He broke his neck because he was old and he was big. He was fat. He was in fasting. <laughs> 
He was old. He was big and his fat. The Bible says that this, that Eli fell over and he broke his neck after he heard the words and his heart could not take it, that his sons had died and that the ark of the presence of God had been taken away from Israel. Don't you realize that when the ark was taken, it, sing, it symbolized the glory of God being carried away from Israel. It symbolized the glory of God exiting Israel as a nation. It symbolized that the presence, the power, the voice, and the majesty of God would no longer be there. And so here it is that Eli's daughter-in-law was getting ready to give birth. And not only did her two, not only did her husband die and her brother-in-law died, but now she got news that her father-in-law died. And the Bible says that as she was giving birth, watch what she named her child. She named her child Ichabod, which means where is the Lord's glory? For she said, Israel's glory is gone. And can I just tell you while we've been preaching peace and while we've been preaching prosperity, can I just say as we were preaching all of these things that came from the flesh, God's glory had departed, hallelujah, a long time ago. And now this plague and now this enemy has come and has shaken the foundations of the nation so that we could recognize that God's glory had not been hallelujah there. And here's the good news though. Here's the good news. I'm glad that God is not going to allow his glory to stay because he's got some glory carriers that he's raising up. Hallelujah. I'm glad that God, hallelujah, is raising up some prophetic voices that there is a remnant that is going to be used by God. Not only are they going to be, be repentant in their heart, but because of their repentance, here's what the Lord is saying. This is a prophetic word today. Here's what the Lord is saying. Because of their repentance, I am going to restore. Hallelujah. Because of their repentful hearts, because these are the people that will seek my face. This is the generation of them that shall seek the face of God, of Jacob. This is the generation generation of them that shall call on the God of Abraham and of Isaac. This is the generation of them that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And because of this, I believe that God is getting ready to bring his glory back because there are some glory carriers that are raising up, that God is raising up in this moment and in this hour. And here is what I love. I love this good news of our text because here we see, amen, the prophetic voice of the seeing eye prophet that peeps through the peripheral of the future and after all the darkness that was going on after the darkness had covered Israel. Watch this. The seeing eye prophet Isaiah recognized this, that the darkness was only a state. It was not their fate. And Isaiah declared and gave a demand to the remnant. Here is what he said. Arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. And I'm here to tell the church it's time to arise. Watch what he says. See darkness covers the earth and thick darkness over the people but the Lord rises rises up on you hallelujah and his glory appears where over you and because his glory is over you watch what will happen nations will come to your light and kings will be drawn to the brightness of your rising hallelujah darkness doesn't stop God from moving God is about to raise up some glory carriers his glory is about to come back to the church his glory is about to come back to the nations where people will begin to bow their knees and confess that Jesus Christ is truly Lord and God God is about to raise up glory he carries and I'm here to tell somebody that these dark days are God's greatest opportunity to shine these dark moments are God's greatest opportunity to move and to work his work come on now somebody somebody comment he's about to work his work yeah he's about to do his thing God is about to work his work and his power and his presence and his magnificence and his voice will be heard again and nations and prime ministers and kings will be drawn to the brightness of the glory of God he, hallelujah God is raising up glory carriers I'm done I'm done I wonder if there's any glory carriers come on that's on the stream today. I wonder if there's any glory carriers that's at our online campus that says, God, I want to be a part of that remnant that you're rising up, that the prophet Isaiah paired into the peripheral of the future and saw, hallelujah, these glory carriers because watch this, the glory of God was rising in the middle of a dark time. And I'm here to tell you that God ain't done yet. Hallelujah. What is uh, before us is greater than what's behind us and is greater than what we're going through hallelujah because what we're going through is not our final state hallelujah it is only a state and God is rising you up 
God is rising you up. I began. I began to, to read further into Isaiah 60. And here's what some of the verses say. It's very prophetic. And I want to just read it before we pray and close out. I just want to read it before we pray and close out. But, but here is what Isaiah 60 says. It's prophetic. And I believe that it's, prop, it's proper for now. It's now is the proper time for us to really understand this text. He says this, lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be what? Radiant. Because you're about to reflect God's glory. Come on now, somebody. You're about to be a glory carrier. He says your heart will throb and swell with what? Joy. And here's what's going to happen when we get ready to see the glory of the Lord return for the glory carriers. Here's what I'm getting ready to tell you. Because while everybody understands that in the in the wake of this pandemic that we call COVID-19, there is going to be another pandemic and it's going to be an economic one. There is going to be an economic hit to the nations because everything had to be shut down. Economies had been closed and seized up as a result of this COVID-19. And watch this, even in the travel industry, you see that there are airlines that literally came to a halt. There are countries, there are nations that have shut their air, their airways to any incoming air traffic to any sea carriers come on these are hard times that have come in the wake of this pandemic but here's what happens when the glory of the Lord begins to rise there is going to be a transfer of wealth that will come as the glory returns and the transfer as well is coming from the hands of the sinner into the hands of the righteous watch it I'm not just preaching what I believe I'm preaching what I know from the word and here is what here is what I know he says this, he says, your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will come over your land. Young camels of Median and Epha and all the Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kadar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Neboeth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar. And watch this, I will adorn my glorious temple. Watch what the prophet says. He was before his time. He says, who are these that fly along the clouds like doves to their nests? They didn't have planes back in those days. But yet I believe that God gave this eagle-eyed prophet, hallelujah, the ability to see even into the 21st century, even into 2020. And he is saying, watch this, that planes will begin to fly again. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. Things are going to begin to happen again. And when they happen, watch this God saying that it's going to be because of this great wealth transfer that is getting ready to shift. Because the atmosphere, when glory comes, the atmosphere shifts. He says, surely the islands look to me. Come on, Bahamas. Come on, Jamaica. Come on, Turks and Caicos. Come on, Caribbean Sea. Hallelujah. Every island look to him in the lead of the ships of Tarish and bringing your children from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with what splendor. Foreigners, everybody say foreigners. Foreigners will rebuild your walls. Freeport and Abaco. Come on now, somebody. Foreigners will rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you. Here's what the Lord is saying and I'm done. Though in anger I struck you. In favor I will show you compassion. Your gates will, stay, will always stand open. Small business owners. Come on, business owners. God says that you won't have to worry about bankruptcy and shutdowns when this glory comes. Hallelujah. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. I believe, hallelujah, that now is the time we will see the rise of the empire of the kingdom of God because there are glory carriers that he is raising up. Hallelujah, that understand that we've got this treasure in earthen vessels. That while the glory may have been departed, the glory is about to return. And there is a remnant that is rising up. And I don't know about you, Relevant Online. I don't know about you, hallelujah, wherever you're watching us from. But I am a glory carrier. Hallelujah. I am a glory carrier. God's about to shift things in my favor. 
tomorrow. His word is about to still come to pass over my life because these dark moments are the greatest platforms for God to perform. This crisis is going to cause God to be able to create, hallelujah, glory carriers that will shift nations, shift atmospheres. And I believe that I'm a part of that. I believe that you're a, a part of that. Here's my bottom line and I'm done. God's glory will return and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Let me tell you something. God's glory will return and the darkness will not, not con, co, co, extinguish it. Though he struck us down in anger, he's about to show us favor because of his compassion. As we begin to cry out to God, as we begin to truly pour our hearts back to the place that he wants it to be, as we begin to repent, God is about to restore. Hallelujah. He's about to restore. He's about to cause the glory of God to rise again. This was week four of glory carriers, but here's what I want to say. If there's anybody here that does not know the Lord as your Savior, if there's anybody that's watching, let me tell you, God is calling you, you by name. God is saying, watch this. Nothing can help you through this dark time like I can. Hallelujah. It's only because of the one who was on the inside that we can overcome that which is on the outside. And if you're not in Christ, I'm telling you, come to him today come to him today because watch this he loves you and he cares for you and so right now across the screen there are there is a banner coming up that if you are on our online campus and you want to give your heart to the lord come on push that hand let us know amen wherever you are if you're on facebook and you want to give your heart to the lord let us know we want to contact you because we believe that god's raising up glory carriers hallelujah and you're going to be one of them you're going to be a part of it in jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name hallelujah I hope that you were blessed by this word this was the conclusion of our sermon series gloriology and I'm going to now send it back over to our campus pastor in Exuma pastor Carson I hope you guys are good over there God bless you we love you guys and we're praying for you but now we're going to send it back over to you in Exuma Bahamas pastor Carson God bless you Wow, Pastor D, what a powerful word today. We're doing extremely well here in the Bahamas, but I just got to repeat that bottom line again, man, because I was actually taking notes and I wrote it down. Um, the bottom line, God's glory will return and the darkness cannot extinguish it. I'm going to say it one more time for those of you watching us online. God's glory will return. And the darkness cannot extinguish it. Listen, I want to remind each and every single one of you that we are glory carriers. That God created each and every single one of us to reflect his glory here on the earth. There are some of you that's watching right now. And you may be saying in your heart that this message spoke directly to me. That I feel in my heart that I was far from God. But God is bringing me back home. God wants to me to reconnect back to him. And I believe today that this message will help you to do just that. To help you reconnect back to God and get back into your rightful place. Others of you, maybe you're watching us for the first time ever online. And you're saying today that you want to surrender your heart to God. You don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And today you want to surrender your life to Him. If you're watching us from our online campus, you're going to see a banner that's showing up right below this video. Go ahead and click that banner. Raise your hand as a sign of surrender. Others of you, if you're watching from Facebook, on YouTube, drop a comment down below and say, I surrender my life to Christ today. And I want to lead you into a simple prayer this morning. And you can do this from wherever you are. It's nothing spooky. But I just want you to repeat after me as I lead you into this simple prayer. Father God, thank you for sending your son Christ Jesus, who died on the cross and paid for my sins. I believe in all my heart that God raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving my life. Now today I give you mine. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Relevant, listen, I want you to celebrate with me. I want you to let's go ahead and celebrate all those persons that, that said that prayer of surrender today. I believe that heaven is rejoicing even for one soul that's came into the kingdom as a result of today's experience. Amen. Amen. Listen, um, if today's experience was an absolute blessing to you today, we want you to know that you have the opportunity right now to sow a seed 
Those of you who are members, our volunteers, you can also sow your tithes and your offerings right now simply by going to relevantkingdomcenter.com forward slash give. If you guys will see some footage coming across the screen right now, I'm showing you guys how to do that. But go ahead and click on the Give tab, and then you simply go to Give Now. You go ahead and enter your information, enter the amount that you want to give, and then click on Give Now. Relevant Kingdom Center, I want to thank each and every single one of you because you guys are a generous people. This is a generous church, and it's because of you that week after week we get to impact lives, not just here in the Bahamas, not just over there in Florida, but around the world. And so I want to say a special thank you because it's your generosity that helps to make all of this possible. Well, I'd like to say thank you again to all of you that's tuned in from wherever you are around the world. You know, we look forward to, to seeing you again next week. Um, here are just a few announcements of what's coming up this week. Of course, this coming Wednesday, we're going to be gathering online again for our online Bible study. If you'd like to register, if you'd like to be a part of this Bible study with us this Wednesday, simply visit our website, relevantkingdomcenter.com, and you'll see a link there or a tab that says online Bible study. Well, Listen, we look forward to seeing all of you right back here next week. But here's what we want you to do. We want you to invite somebody, invite a friend, invite a family member, a co-worker. Um, share this link and invite them to tune in to church online with you. We love you guys. We're praying for all of you. And we can't wait to see you next week. Thank you for watching Relevant Online. Consider becoming a relevant partner with us and sow a financial gift of any amount to help us continue our mission and get the word to the world. We can only do it with your generous support. Visit us online at relevantkingdomcenter.com slash give. Relevant Kingdom Center is one church in two locations, Eczema, Bahamas and Port Charlotte, Florida. Be our guest and visit any one of our campuses. RKC. It's not just another church, it's a movement.